G'day and welcome to the episode. I'm Tim James and this is Island Life. In this episode, we're going to look at exactly how I butcher a side of pig to make bacon and ham. But before we get to that, let's do the intro. Alrighty, let's kick this episode off. First up, I've got my mate Andy here. Andy's from Pilly Beach, you might remember him from uh, a couple of episodes ago uh, when we did a scuba dive together. Um, he's the dive instructor from Pilly Divers. So he's your go-to if you want to dive on Tablas, uh, whether you want to learn or you need a local guide. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description below uh, so you can find Andy on Facebook. So Andy's here to just get a second camera angle so we can get some close-ups while we're working on, on the pig. Before we get going with the butchering, we'll just quickly talk about the slaughtering. So we bought this pig today from a local farmer. It's about 80 kilos, uh, so we'd expect after we're finished here to get about 50, 55 kilos. Um, we have a couple of local guys come in and do the slaughtering for us. Um, I can get involved in that process, but I kind of prefer not to for a few reasons. Um, plus also, they get um, the parts of the pig that we don't want. So they get the head, they get the blood, the intestines, the feet, and we get the rest of the pig for um, what we're gonna do with it. And in this case, it's gonna be bacon and ham. So the reason I chose to learn how to do this was because um, the way they butcher here is they do a lot of uh, actual chopping with meat cleavers. And that's fine if, if uh, if you don't mind bone chips in your food, but I don't really like getting the bone chips in my food. So I decided that if I learned how to butcher myself, then I could really control the quality of the cuts, the type of cuts, and of course now that we've moved into doing hams and bacon, uh, it's much easier if I know what I'm going to do with each cut as I'm doing the butchering process. So for me, um, learning how to do this has been a really good um, education and it allows us to really get the meat that we want in the condition that we want it. Uh, so if you want to take a machete or a cleaver and hack at a carcass, that's fine. But I prefer to use a rubber hammer and a meat cleaver. Um, I also use a bone saw at times. And for all of the other cuts, I have a large machete. They call them a galok or a bolo locally, um, which is good for the long cuts. And then the only other knife I use is a bony knife just for all of the finer cuts uh, when we're removing um, particular muscle groups for particular purposes. I might do some jerky out of some of this depending on how the cuts come off but the majority of this side, uh, I'm not sure about the second side, we might keep some of that for cooking meat but the majority of this is going to be bacon and ham. So having said all of that, uh, where do we start? The first thing we do uh, once we've got the pig to this point we go for what we call, we call primary cuts. So we basically take the shoulder off, which is the front leg. We take the leg off, which is the back leg, and it leaves us with the rib cage and the belly, which we then will turn into bacon and hands from those. So there's probably gonna be some butchers that are about to scream at their phones if they're watching this on YouTube, because uh, there's a number of different ways to do this. And what I'm about to do may not be the best way. It's certainly not the only way. Plenty of ways to skin a cat, but for what I want, for my purposes, I just do straight cuts. You can do angle cuts and get fancy, but I'm just going to go with two straight cuts. So, welcome back. Uh, Andy just pointed out that I was getting the top of my head cut off by the camera, so we've just moved the camera back a little bit. Um, so we were just talking about primary cuts. So we're going. To, the first thing we're going to do is um, cut the pig into three parts. But before we do that, we want to remove the trotters, which are the feet, and we want to remove the tenderloin, which is inside the rib cage, because ten the tenderloin is uh, by far and away the nicest cut, the most tender cut, obviously, hence tenderloin, uh, but it also goes between two cuts, so we need to remove that from the inside, we'll do that in a moment, uh, before we start cutting the pig up. So the first thing we're going to do is take the boning saw, and we're going to just take off the foot. Okay. Now that we've removed the feet, 
we want to turn it over, we'll take out the tenderloin. Okay, so the tenderloin sits, you can't quite see it from that angle, I'm sure Andy will get a better angle, but the tenderloin sits here just underneath the spine. So we start at one end and we just slowly peel that out. Andy. <laughs> so that's the tenderloin. Um, almost certainly the best cut of the pig if you just want to pan fry. That's my favourite cut. Put that aside. When we're looking at cutting the leg, you can see there's a kink in the spine just here. That's the cut point. So we want to just go one vertebrae back from right where the spine turns. And we're going to cut straight through there. So basically we start again with the boning saw and we're just going to cut straight through and then we'll finish the cut off with the big machete. And again, if you're a butcher and you're screaming at your phone right now, I'm sorry. I know this is not the way I normally do it in a butchering shop, but for me, this is what I want. Alrighty, so that is the leg, the back leg, which is just called the leg as well. we'll put that in the sink, give that a rinse off, and uh, then we'll take off the front shoulder. Are you happy with the size, then? Yeah, it's just so <laughs> hard to maneuver. So again, with the shoulder, we're just going to do a straight cut through. The reason I do the straight cuts is because when we're doing our bacon, it gives me nice even squares. You'll see in a minute when we take the rib cage out, we'll wind up with three or possibly four, depending on how much muscle is on the belly, um, or three or four slabs for bacon. And then once we cure the, the bacon for five days, we can put it on the smoker and we'll get four slabs from this side to slice up. All right. Fairly straightforward. Just find the shoulder at the corner there and just cut straight through. shoulder so that's our primary cuts we've got our two legs and the belly okay so what we're going to do with the belly uh, is two things the first thing we're going to do is take the rib cage out and the spine off and that'll expose the back strap we want to take the back strap out I'm going to turn that into back strap bacon which is done the same as bacon 
but it just is the back strap, which is another good tender cut, and it's nice and big, but it makes amazing bacon for cubed bacon, like for carbonara or something like that. Uh, so we're gonna get a nice long back strap, and uh, we'll then turn that into a bacon as well. So the very first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna remove that back strap uh, with the bony knife. This is a little bit fiddly and it takes a little bit of time, but once it's done, we can then work on removing the rib cage and get the belly out. And it looks like there's quite a lot of uh, muscle on this. We're gonna get a lot of bacon out of this. It's nice and thick too. It's uh, gonna be a good pig for bacon. If you're Australian, you might be wondering why I'm taking the back strap off when we leave that on our bacon. The answer is, after doing that for a few pigs, the people that were buying bacon from me actually specifically asked for it to be separated. So, while in Australia we leave the back strap on and we get our, what the Americans call our streaky bacon with the, the back strap at the end. So we have the circle of meat with the, the streaky part uh, next to that. <clears throat> For what the um, people on the island want, the expat community, uh, they specifically want these two cuts to be separated. So for me, it makes no difference to me. If that's what they want, that's what I'll do and it's, it's totally fine. So that's why I'm separating out the back strap from the rib cage or from the belly. That's the back strap. I'll cut that in half and I'll treat that exactly the same as I'm going to treat the belly flaps uh, when we're going through the bacon, uh, the bacon process. So for now, we'll put that aside, just cut it in half so it's easier to work with down the track. But that is one of the most beautiful cuts, super tender, ready to go. But it's not going to be eaten in a fry pan, it's going to be turned into bacon. <clears throat> Next thing we want to do is just lift out this rib cage. We can then use these uh, for making a rib roast or a rack. We can uh, slow cook it. There's a number of different things we can do here. So I'll lift out the spine with the ribs and then that's going to give us what we can work with in terms of bacon. So, ow, that's sharp. That's the next thing to come out is the, is the ribs. So we just run a marking cut. We want to use as much of this as possible, so we want to go as high as we can. So we'll start up here, run along like that. And again, if you're a butcher and you're screaming at your phone, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this is not necessarily the way you would do it. But for me, in this situation, this is what I need it to do. I need it to be, so. My wife uses these bones to just flavor different dishes. So um, I just basically cut these up and she can use them uh, however she wants. The reason I like to use a rubber hammer with the cleaver is because if you strike um, at uh, whatever you're butchering, you can't get absolute accuracy and you're probably not gonna get two strikes in the same place necessarily, so you, that's when you get your bone chips. So for me, placing the cleaver and then hitting it with the rubber hammer is just a far more accurate, far cleaner way to go through whatever you're trying to get through. In this case, the spine. So there we go. That's the spine taken out, take the ribs out. And again, if I leave a little bit of meat on this, I'm not fussed because we are going to eat these as ribs. Um, but having said that, I also want to leave as much on the belly flap as I can because that's going to be our bacon. So slice this out.
<clears throat> if you are doing this, just note that there are the, the rib bones, obviously, but at the end, along here, there's like a sequence or a series of pieces of cartilage that aren't bone, they're flexible, but you don't want to leave them on the bacon. So that, I like to take that out with the rib cage as I'm processing this part of the pig. Cage. We'll cut that into a more manageable size so we can uh, fit it in the pot. Pretty straightforward. And now we're down to our bacon belly flat. And now it might become a little more obvious why I wanted to try and keep the cut square. Because when we're working with this um, in terms of making bacon, we want to try and keep it in sizes that are manageable. For me, manageable is something that will fit in a tray that I can get these things curing in in the fridge. So what we'll do is we'll take out the fat from this side. All of the fat, there's a saying in butchering pigs, we can use every part of the pig except the squeal, or every part of the pig except the oink, um, which is really true. I mean, the boys out the back right now, they're preparing their head for their families, they're making the, using the blood to make a dish, um, they use the intestines for a range of different things. Nothing goes to waste, even the feet, they'll eat the feet. Um, and for us, we're going to use every part of the, the pig that we've got in here. Uh, I render down the fat, which is a really easy process to render down and get lard, and then we can cook in the lard so we know it's nice and healthy, and it's got a kind of a, almost like a bacony flavor to it, so it's really nice to use. But for now, there's a flap of, of fat here at the top that was behind the back strap, so we can cut, cut that off, and then we can work on squaring up the cuts for the bacon. All right, and there we have it. I'll process that later. And there's our bacon flat. Now, we need to turn this into a manageable size. There's no point using this part here because it's just fat. We don't want, with the bacon, we don't want to just fat. Don't want it to be just fat. The fat um, in bacon is probably where 80% of the flavor comes from. So the, if you look at the profile of the bacon, which now looks like what you see when you buy streaky bacon. You can see that beautiful layering. There's about five different layers in there of muscle and fat, then muscle and fat. That's what we're after, and we want to try and square this up so we've got usable cuts. So what we'll do is we'll cut it into quarters and see how we go from there. So this is going to be a beautiful cut, um, really perfect bacon cut. That would be my choice if I was going to keep it, that would be exactly what I'd be doing. Uh, this section here, we're going to have to just lose a little bit of it, because a lot of it's fat. So what we'll do is we'll take this one, my daughter, uh, and we'll just take a little bit out of this section. So we're going to use most of it, but not all of it. So we've got two slabs of bacon, and have a look at this last part. That looks good too. slabs of bacon. With the leg and the shoulder we simply take the skin off and then we debone it and what's left we turn entirely into hams.
Alright, well, that's the leg bone now. Last bit. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing with this, we'll just debone it and whatever we've got left at the end, we'll use that uh, depending on whether we're going to do ham or jerky, we'll process it a different way. But for now, we'll debone it. Right, that's the that's the hock, which is the, the femur, thigh. Um, the muscle group on these is so small, it's probably not worth keeping his ham, so I'm just going to put that aside because that makes a really nice roast, So, or we can use it to flavour another dish. So I'll put that aside with the bones. So now we've got all of the muscle groups from that section of the pig um, ready to go. We can just choose how we're going to cut them up to turn them into hams. I try to get my ham sort of between half a kilo and a kilo. I'm not too fast what the end weight is, but um, something that's manageable for when I'm prepping it in the fridge and then when it goes on the smoker. So normally try and cut about that size. So this will, this will turn into maybe four hams by the time we're done. Here we go. Eight hands from the pig and we've got four slabs of bacon and we've got two back, or one back strap cut in half. So happy with that. That's that all done. So for now, it's time to tidy up and pack this made away. So there you have it, that's the exact process that I use for butchering a pig to make ham and bacon. In the next episode I'm going to go through that exact process step by step so you can really see exactly how I make my bacon here on the island. So in the meantime, that's a wrap. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have enjoyed this episode, please click on the like button and hitting subscribe will help you find future videos that I post. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.